Did you know he wanted to be a father? Yes. Not all the time, <clears throat> but I knew he loved children. What do you think uh, of Michael as a father? What kind of father was he? My goodness. Did you hear Paris during the memorial? That's what kind of father he was. He was the best father. He knew how to raise children. He would teach them. He would cook for them sometimes. They loved it. Um, he had them reading an hour a day. He would take them to museums and places like that. And every time they traveled and the kids were with them, they would go to museums wherever. Because we used to do that uh, when we traveled, Michael and I. He would always go to museums or, or the places of interest, and he just kept doing that. Where do you think he learned how to be a good father? You know, I don't think you learn that. It's in you if you want, if you're going to be a good father. And he loved children and he loved people, and I think that's what makes him a good father. No, I didn't know that he had left me a guardian. He never told me he would, but no, it wasn't surprising. Because I would have felt really bad if he had have left, even though he didn't know he was going to die, but if he had had someone else named there, I would have felt bad that he didn't leave me with his children. How do you feel when people make statements about the way he looked? Oh, it, it hurt. It hurt me that when they would do it, but they they didn't know why he did it. Do you know why he did it? No. <laughs> I know that why he turned his face. Um, he just took all the brown stuff away, but why he did this other stuff. And then too, Michael, he'd had his nose done too many times. Now the other stuff, I don't think he did the other stuff that they try to pretend he did. He had the cleft put in his chin because the doctor kept saying, put a cleft in your chin, put a cleft. He said, okay. <laughs> but other than that, that's Michael did his nose too many times. I had even spoke to the doctor about it. And I told him, I said, next time he come, put him under, cut him and sew him up and tell him you fix his nose. <laughs> I didn't say it in that order, but that way, but that's what I meant. I told him, please don't do anything else. And, um, Do you think that he, the doctor, listened to what you said and actually did that? Put him he up? could have, but no, because sometimes when I see him, it knows different. But um, I had heard that some people start taking um, this plastic surgery and it become a habit. You know, they just keep doing things. So. Um, <clears throat> Not really, because. Do you think that he didn't like the way he looked or felt? Well, he wasn't happy with his nose, because when he became an adolescent, you know, people change, and um, they start changing, and his nose got bigger, and he didn't like that part, and so that's when he decided to fix his nose. But um, other than that cleft in his chin, that's the only thing I, that he uh, did besides um, cleaning up his skin because of the vitiligo. You're saying because his face didn't change until he put, until he changed his skin tone. No, he wasn't. Because if he was, he wouldn't have done it. But. Um, he, the skin tone color, the tone, the color of his skin, he did that because of the vitiligo. And um, 
I didn't see anything wrong with, with what he was doing, even though I didn't like the way he looked because he was too white. But uh, I guess that's the only thing that could come out of what he was doing, because he did that to keep his uh, face from looking spotted, brown and white. So he just said, well, I'll just turn everything white, because he couldn't turn everything brown because, it was because of the lack of pigment anyway in his skin. And I'm sure he wasn't happy about um, what, what was going on with his body because of um, the vitiligo that was going to make him spotted. Um, quite nicely, I felt really bad when people would call Michael uh, different names on his, um, on, um, I heard it on the news a lot, and then people would laugh about him on the different shows, and, and they would say how he wanted to be white and all that. It, that's not the truth. Michael knew who he was, and um, he did that for a reason. So sometimes when you don't know what you're talking about, you should keep your mouth shut. Yes, when Michael did the Pepsi commercial, and um, he burned his scalp, it was very painful, very painful. And um, it was so painful, and he burned his hair, and um, it didn't hair didn't grow back in that spot. But, because um, what it was, it, the doctors at one time pulled the scalp over and where the hair was growing and, and you know, stitched. And they stitched down the middle where his um, hair was together. But I went over to visit him one time at the ranch and he was showing me what they had done to him because of that. And he had a balloon under his scalp. And he was talking to me about it. And it was so terrible to me and I really felt so bad for him that I didn't let him see me, but when I turned and went away, I was crying because he told me it was painful. And um, I don't know, too, he didn't tell me too much about why they did it or anything like that, but it was something I think you can, you can inflate the balloon a little. I guess he had to do it a little at a time, but oh my gosh. And he felt really bad and he had to take pain pills to keep from hurting he paid a big price for his fame oh yes yeah. a lot of injuries a lot of pain <laughs> he didn't think about suing Pepsi for doing that he could have but that was nothing he wasn't out for money like most people are He didn't sue them. I didn't know anything about that. No, they gave, they gave him the money. Mm -hmm. They just gave it to him. And do you, did you know about that? No. They gave it to him and he gave it to uh, charity, all of it. He did? He gave it to the burn. Uh, the burn. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> you know I don't know, but I, I know that he had a burn center. Yeah, that was the one because he donated the money to the... The burn the center. Place. And they put his name on it for that. I guess. When Michael went to the burn center and he, they took that photo of him? Yes. Oh, in that chamber? Yeah. That, he climbed over in there because he was curious to see what it felt like. And they took a picture of him. And then it was put in the tabloids and all that Michael um, living in that, um, what, what was it called? Hyperbaric chamber. Hyperbaric chamber. And that was a lie. It wasn't the truth. But you know how people are going to stretch everything you do. I don't know what he thought, but I don't think he came out to correct them or anything. So evidently, if he did, they didn't write, put it in the papers. They thought that he was still living at home, and a lot of people came, and they were looking for it. <laughs> when they came, where is that uh, chamber that Michael was in? And I said, that is not the truth. That he was at the hospital, he saw it, and he climbed over in it just to see how it felt to be in it. it Michael thought it was funny that they were doing this to him. Uh, then there's another one that came out that he was buying the uh, elephant man bones. He thought that was funny too. Hey, I don't know what these people are going to say next. That's what he, we would say. Michael regretted that he didn't 
defend himself when they came out with those allegations that he was a child molester. I was upset because uh, they paid those people all that money. And, uh, and I was asking him, why did you let that happen? And he told me that uh, the lawyers, that's what they had uh, got together and said it's best to pay them off so they would go away. But I'd, I'd like to say one thing. Ask your question. If you had a child and someone molested your child, would you take money? You know what you would do? Beat the heck out of that man? If you could have your husband beat the heck out of him, then call the cops and tell him what that person had done to your child and have him arrested. Anytime somebody take money for something like that, anyone should know it's not the truth. They just want money from a person. I would never take money for something like that if somebody had molested one of my children. No way. That's why it's a big lie, and everybody should think like that. This man should have been ashamed of himself for doing my son like that. How did you feel when the second allegation? I knew that was a lie, too. And my son was so upset, and he said, I knew who did this to me. Because people are so evil and cruel. And he had helped this family, but they knew who they, they tried to um, get someone else to do that before they, they got this family to do it. But they wouldn't do it because they knew that it was wrong. Who's they? I'm not calling any names. That'd be wrong for me to do that. 